Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tech with Solutions, and today our special guest is going to be Casey Adams. If you guys are not familiar with who Casey Adams is, one of the first things I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna put his Instagram and his TikTok down below in the first link in the description. <laughs> Absolutely has been killing it. So one of the first times that I actually came across uh, your profile was, I think it was actually Ty Lopez that was uh, showcasing yep. you as one of his success stories, Yeah, Yep, yep, love yeah. Ty, so he's the man. <laughs> you wanna talk a little bit about kind of like how you got your start and what you do? Yeah, yeah, 100%, so number one, Appreciate it, brother, for having me on the show. <laughs> and it's it's funny, man. So speaking of Ty, so three years ago or three and a half, I'm 19 now, and when I was 16, it was I had this weird moment in my life that sort of like set the tone for everything that I'm doing now. And I was 16. I've always played sports growing up, hockey, lacrosse, and then I played football. And I had this really bad neck injury that put me into a neck brace for a little over six months. I was diagnosed with inner spinous ligament damage, and it was during this six month period that I really found myself and I had to form a new identity for me because I was this sophomore in high school, now depressed in a neck brace, not knowing what I wanted to do. <laughs> and just, I didn't know really what my next step was along my journey. And it's one of those things that I'm on YouTube, you know, just watching videos and this dude, Ty Lopez, he's popping up everywhere. He's running a bunch of ads and he's talking about the good life, health, wealth, love, and happiness. And like I said, I was depressed, young, and I, long story short, get into one of his programs, start following just his content on Instagram. And that opens me up to an entire new world of just self-development. And I start following people like Gary Vee and Andy Frisella and obviously Ty and it was er, over the next 12 months where I really started to find myself with social media marketing, with starting to run Facebook ads, and most importantly now with just building a personal brand, just mm -hmm. documenting my story, mainly on Instagram to start. And um, yeah, so, so Ty, 12 months after finally discovering who he was, I, like I said, bought into his programs. I went to an event in San Diego with Caleb Maddox, actually. We were just oh, talking wow. about him. So Caleb was one of the OGs, the people that I started following. He was 14, I was 15. <laughs> and he invited me to an event in San Diego, January 13th, 2017. So I went out there, that was my first time ever going to California. I flew me and my dad out there, super cool trip. The day I get home, I send Ty a DM on Instagram. I'm like, hey Ty, eight months ago, I was depressed in my neck brace. Didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but now I've started my social media agency and I'm managing local businesses, Facebook ads, like dentists and chiropractors and mm -hmm. all like these things in the medical field. And I sent him this message just randomly on Instagram. I had no brand at the time, no massive audience. He gets back to me and he says, hey man, love the story. We should shoot a video in LA. So he flies me out to LA two weeks later, pays for my flight, the hotel, the whole thing. And that was my first time in LA. So once I saw that and it, it sort of opened me up to this whole new world of like, hey, let me actually double down, focus on these relationships, build my brand on social media, and most importantly, double down on my agency at the time so yeah. that I can continue to travel and go to events. But I'm sure after that, that's where you probably saw me on the one of the testimonial things for Ty. Yeah. And that, that definitely sort of kicked off my personal brand, he was shouting me out, he was plugging me, and over the next 12 months of 2017, I was dedicating once a month, I was skipping school, traveling out to different business events in LA and Miami and New York, mainly with Kieran actually, and I just really fell in love with the people aspect of how can I connect and network with world-class people, and of course. I come from a small town in Chesterfield, Virginia, and I had no, I would say, positive influences around me. A lot of my friends, they're doing drugs, my two older brothers, they went to college, dropped out, and I don't come from an entrepreneurial background so I sort of got hooked into this new mentality and long story short it's been about three years now and we'll, we'll get more into what I'm doing now but that was definitely the jump start in terms of Ty and really just seeing all this content online I think that's super cool because um, I can't even imagine uh, especially at such a young age seeing that opportunity present itself because if you really think about it it was just one DM that really sparked <laughs> this potential change yep, right yep. Uh, and now if I'm not mistaken you lead one of the top business podcasts on iTunes yeah right? it's a uh I'm um, 160 right now on the iTunes business charts. So yeah, it's, it's been cool. I've been top 200 for a little over like nine months now and I've done over a hundred plus interviews. Just interviewed um, Tillman Fertitta and he's, he's the owner of the Houston Rockets. And it's funny, I was talking to my buddy the other day about this from a podcast perspective. I started just interviewing my friends in my bedroom on Skype, like people that I knew in the business community that yeah. I was connected with, whether they're in real estate or social media or YouTube. And it was just started off as this thing where the reason I started it, Gary Vee, someone that I 
follow and respect, he was talking a lot about podcasting and literally I still use the mic. It was a little hundred dollar Blue Yeti mic that I got when I was 17. I still use that to interview. The one that you have in Yeah, <laughs> I, I literally still use the same equipment. And, and it's gone from, like I said, interviewing good friends, people that I know, to now billionaires and executives or Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, all these different cool people that I have massive respect for. But the podcast has allowed me to connect with these people in a deep relationship, you know, whether that's sitting down with them for two hours or having them speak at my event. It's it's definitely opened me up into an entire different world of people. And I always tell people, my main goal on social media is to not be on social media, meaning I, if I could turn off my phone and throw it in a lake and just have my contact list and I, I know I can call someone and they'll pick up and I can truly have a conversation with them, like that's more meaningful to me than any follower or amount of likes or any sort of engagement online. Like yes, I understand it leads to that, but for me it's truly about the people. You know, it's like we've known each other for a little over a year now and it's it's these moments in person that truly define our relationship and that's definitely something that the podcast has opened up for me, but it's been fun. I think that one, one of the things that I respect most about you and uh, this is something that I can't I can't honestly say about too many people is you've been like just a go-getter and action taker in just these different markets that I've known that uh, you've invested your time into so not only did you start that podcast and have you been doing well and I've had you know huge names in like yep. the entrepreneurial like kind of like influential market yep. uh, but now you are hosting events you are you know hosting events not only just uh, with your own company uh, not with you not just with your own company, but with like drama himself, right? Yeah. And running the Young and Reckless brand. I think it's just like so amazing how you just said that you connected the people from like, uh, what was it, iconic to TikTok yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And, uh, it's crazy to like think that regardless of your age and you being so young, like I think it's so admirable that, you know, you're so well spoken in a way and so well respected that you're not only able to build these relationships, but you're also able to connect people that can ultimately that. lead to their success as well. So uh, I talked about it very briefly. Uh, other than just your podcast itself, uh, what else do you kind of have going on right yeah. now? What are you excited for? For sure. So, I mean, number one, I think, like you said, talking about events, that's something that I started having just these little small masterminds events in late 2017, and it was just a former. Ty actually, he told me, he's like, you can go to a business events or you can host them, but if you do both, your network will expand at a very exponential rate. So I was like, all right, let me just see. It started off by just getting an Airbnb for the day and bringing people together, whether that's people in the real estate or YouTube and just bringing these people together in a location, right? But nowadays, we just did the, in, back in May, the Young and Reckless Build Your Empire event in yeah. LA, little over 500 people there, and we had anywhere from Paul Rodriguez, who's an X Games gold medalist, to someone like Robert Greene, who's the author of The 48 Laws of Power, and a lot of people in between. And it's really, I, I call it my um, the pullback method. And what I mean by that is, for me, having events, it's not only just something where you can make money with because at the end of the day, events from the front end, you don't make money too much, right? right it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a good place to put people. But I understand the people in my life will dictate the opportunities that come from that, of right? Of course. So for me nowadays, having this event with Young and Reckless and what we just did with them back in May, it's truly allowed me to take, like I said, a relationship from Simply this example, me and Drama, I've been watching him on MTV since I was nine years old. Yeah, Robin Big, me too. Rob Dyrdek, yeah. Fantasy Factory, all those shows. Like it's That was truly one of like the only shows I was like in love with growing up. To me sending a DM to him on Instagram and just being like, hey man, I love that book. Uh, I'd love to have you on my podcast. And then this was like late 2017. He gets back to me. He's on my show. Good, good stuff, right? Didn't expect anything to come from it. I remember when that happened too. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> it, was, it was literally like... January 2018 where I interviewed him mm -hmm. and I always, I always tell young people this as well where it's like it's all about touch points right like to truly build anything whether that's to, to sell a customer it's like you need to keep showing up exactly. so for me when I build a relationship with someone and I'll tell this story and it'll make sense with drama I have him on my podcast and then one time I'm in LA and I circle back with him I say hey I have another podcast called the Build Your Empire podcast um, I'd love to have you on that show in person so I go to his office, we meet again, that's our second interaction. And then the first time we met, we sort of made this bet where there was like this cool neon sign mm -hmm. in his office. And I was like, dude, where can I get one of those? He was like, what's one of your goals? And I was like, my goal is to move out to the West Coast right when I graduate high school. So he was like, once you do that, I'll get you a sign and ship it to your house. So, you know, we were, we were building our relationship and then long story short, I invite him to speak at um, one of the events. He couldn't make it in October last year where you spoke at yeah. that event, at the Build Your Empire event. 
he decided to come in January. He saw the vibe, he liked what we were doing, and long story short, he texted me two weeks later and was like, hey man, I love what you're doing, let's have an event together in LA. He's like, would you be down? So to just to, to see the progression of like opportunities with the people and relationships, I like to tell that story because I always tell people, you're only truly one DM away, or one sale away, or one relationship away, or one phone call away from truly getting what you want, but it's the, consi it's the consistency of doing that that people don't respect, and they don't like to go in for, right? So mm -hmm. with Drama Now, we have this event coming up October 12th, and Rob Dyrdek's, Rob Dyrdek's gonna be there, and Michael Mente, who's the CEO of Revolve, they're a publicly traded company, and to me, when I, when I say this, and I talk on it, it, it truly goes back to that first DM of like you, like you said, taking that action of if you don't do that, what opportunities will you limit yourself exactly. from? So even nowadays, I, I try to make sure that I'm instantly or trying to connect with 10 people new that I've never met with on a daily basis because I truly, I always tell myself, by the, by the time I'm 21, I'm 19 now, I truly just want to have a very world-class network and 10 exit on where it is today because I know that can really dictate the opportunities and where I want to go, what I want to do, and most importantly, that the people in your life truly do dictate the opportunities. So back to the point of events, that's something I'm definitely focused on, spend a lot of time and energy on, as well as this app Modi. I know that you've seen it mm -hmm. and um, we're in our first Series A funding round right now and it's, it's one of those things where from a tech perspective. I, I saw the app and I got brought on as a, as a partner and it's one of those things where we're consistently just trying to get it in the right hands of people. So we're in we're in three different law firms right now in New York City and it's something that, it's a long story short for people that have just heard about this, Modi, Money on Time Instantly, that's what it stands for, and it's a consulting app, peer-to-peer -peer, um, peer -peer consulting, you can pay per minute as well as send on-screen transactions and it's all built into the app with the ledger so you can see how much money you're making per call, per month, and overall just tracks your transactions. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one of the, the projects on the side that I I do spend my time on because it's it's important to me and our goal is in the next 24 months is to have some sort of exit that um, and I want to speak this into the universe so uh, that's definitely uh, one of the plans. I like that. Um, one of the things that uh, one of my biggest takeaways of what you just said is I remember when we first connected you had more followers than me uh, you still do right but <laughs> that, that's besides the point you had more followers than me I remember I saw you on Ty Lopez, so there's already this like scale where I already see you as like a, a more known like entrepreneur. And on top of that, you're verified on Instagram. <laughs> and why, and the reason I'm saying this yep. is besides all of that and you being so young and all the success and exposure that you've gotten at such a young age, you still messaged me first. And that, that note of, that, that, that thing that you just said of, I make it kind of like my mission uh, to connect it with 10 new people. Mm -hmm. It's I think that it's so admirable for you being so young, being verified, which is a huge milestone for a lot of people, right? That'd be yeah. huge for me. Uh, and when it comes down to like having a following and having that exposure, you don't see, you see a lot of people that have a large following or have that like form of like blue check mark uh, that it kind of gets to their head and they're yeah. unwilling to connect with people that are maybe smaller than them, but to you, your whole focus, the way that I kind of view you like as an investor and as a day trader, it's like you're not a day trader. You're not just trying to like uh, make money every single day. It's more you're looking for like long term, in a sense, just relationships in, in ways that like, yeah, you can monetize now and, and, and build these businesses with the people that you're connecting with now. Yeah. Uh, but I can see why connecting with people like from Iconic or Revolve or Drama and the people from Young and Reckless and just everyone that you're connecting with those are going to be so much more valuable down the road because at the end of the day, yeah, engagement, likes, and the overall followers do not actually matter. Yeah. But what does matter is being able to call up, you know, uh, the people from TikTok and be like, hey, like, <laughs> let's let's make certain yeah. things work. And especially with like all the applications, all the different things that you have going on. If I'm not mistaken, you guys also have an up and coming event in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So with Builder Empire, I know yeah. um, I definitely want to touch on that. And it's cool. I've never been to Puerto Rico. We partnered with this company known as Disrupt, and um, we build. Empire. It's one of those things from a media perspective. We have a little over one and a half million on Instagram and we overall post entrepreneurial content from yeah. our podcast on the Instagram page, but it's overall media platform that we like to share inspiration, motivation, and just entrepreneurial content. And um, we actually just partnered with, um, I don't know if you know his name, Ryan Stuman, hardcore closer on Instagram. Yes, so we brought him on and we're really focused on building out these mini programs from different um, industries, whether that's real estate or social media or whatever it is. And to really bring on different coaches to really build a back end where it's like, hey, you can sign on to Netflix and pick your content. And we want to just make these intro 
intro, not courses, but more so like edu, edutainment, we like to call it, entertainment, education. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely something I'm excited about. And the, the Build Your Empire event in Puerto Rico is more so new market, new location, new people. We did one in um, Germany back in I March. I saw that, yeah. That was super cool. Like literally the most crazy experience. I, it was like 400 people in the room and everyone has translators. So yeah. like I have to speak slow and you can't really crack a joke because they won't get it. <laughs> and like it, it was hard. It was super cool though. And it really motivated me to like see like, all right, what other markets can we tap into, right? Do we want to do something in Cabo or Puerto Rico or Germany? Or I was in China recently and just seeing these different markets from a global perspective, it's it's very intriguing because I think it's one of those things where a lot of people, we get, we get caught up in our, our little bubbles, right? Whether that's your small circle of friends or the people in your space, but for me, traveling and like seeing different parts of China and Germany, it's really given me a broad perspective of like, okay, like how can we tap into these different markets, whether that it's a 20 person event or 200, because it's surprising. Like those people in Germany, they're so loyal once they like see someone from a different continent come into their yeah. local city. So it's definitely something with Puerto Rico that's um, October 26th as well, the week right after the, the Young and Reckless event is something that I'm looking forward to. And I know my partners, John and Josh, they are as well. And should be a good time. Yeah, I, I think that's so cool because I don't know. I, I can, I've seen a lot of people since I've been and I spoke at the Builder Empire event. From that event moving forward, I saw a lot of people then begin their own kind of like um, masterminds and yep. stuff like that. So I would say one of the things that I find the most attractive about your business events um, are that you guys are not scared to literally go to Germany and to reach <laughs> like when you go to Germany and, and all the expenses that I'm, I'm sure you guys incurred with like renting out that space, your flight, all that yeah, stuff yeah. to get the speakers out there. It's not necessarily to like make a profit. It's, it's really you, you I'm sure learn so much as you're trying to then build a brand and build a business in another yeah. country with all these different obstacles that you're going to encounter sure. and then bring those back. And then when you run another event here in the United States, you're going to be like, wow, this is just so much easier because yeah. it's like, you know, you, you've already experienced so much. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how that event plays out Appreciate in Puerto it, Rico. And totally. I, I've never heard anyone do that. After, <laughs> so it's going to be cool yeah. to see it you should be put that together. For sure, man. I really appreciate it. And our buddy Anthony, he's actually, he has a strong foundation in Puerto Rico and like a lot of the ticket sales are going to like this charity in Puerto Rico. So that's definitely something super cool that we're proud of. And uh, it's definitely gonna be a good time. I've never been down there, so um, I'm excited for it for sure. I like that. So is there any tip for someone that is just gonna, it's gonna be weird to say, but for someone young as you're 19, yeah. um, what would you say is one of the, what's a tip that you would either have someone get started when building a personal brand or one of the biggest obstacles uh, or mistakes that you see someone make? Yeah, it's, um, it's funny because I, regarding just something I want to touch on as well, I spoke on it earlier, but I asked that question to Tillman Fertitta like three days ago when I was in DC and he's the billionaire owner of the Rockets. And I said, hey, if you were to restart today, like what would you do different? And I think I, I learned something from that because he, he told me, truthfully, if I lost everything today, I know I could get exactly back to where I am. And this wow. dude's worth $5.2 billion, <laughs> 150 on the Forbes list. And Not bad. Him, him saying that, it, I think what I would want to say from learning from someone like that, it's truthfully like no matter where you are, how old you are, I'm 19 now, I kind of got started in what I'm doing when I was 16. It really just came down for me to full commitment. Like when I knew that, for example, I wanted to move out to the West Coast and not go to college right now, I committed and there was no other options. And that, that's what I think Tillman said to me as well. He's like, dude, when you have no other options, like you make that thing work, exactly. right? And I think a lot of people, and I've spent a lot of time with young people where they, they're trying this, they're experimenting, but they don't believe it. And you can just tell by the way they're talking to of you. Course. They're like, yeah, I, I kind of started this thing and you know, it's not working out, but I, I'm, I'm hungry and motivated. And like, you can just tell by the way, in their voice, the way they carry themselves, like they're not truly committed. And I think full commitment is the first thing you need to do. Like having no other options, like it's like that quote, make your plan be your plan A, right? And if you do that, that's the thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think number one is commitment, but number two, figuring out where you want to spend your time. Cause I'm sure you've, you've probably spent some time with the young people as well. There's, there's so much to, to, to do, right? You could do real estate, you could trade stocks, you could do social media marketing. There's, there's an abundance of opportunities that you can be aware of and you can see. And I think it's about testing, but most importantly, having a central focus, right? So for me, when I started my podcast, I wasn't trying to do YouTube interviews and overcomplicate with cameras. I was like, hey, I have this microphone. Let me sit down with people, get this audio file, and yes, record it when I need to, and having the videos is important. But I think keep it simple, right? When I when I interview someone and it's an hour interview on a microphone and I don't have the perfect video or the perfect lighting or the perfect audio necessarily, let's yeah. say it sounded not the best, but 
I, it, I don't let that affect what my actions are, right? And I think yeah. a lot of people, they overcomplicate. They're waiting for the best cameras or the best social media tactics or the best ads that they're, they, they procrastinate and it only prolongs it. it prolongs the process of what you can do. So I think number one, consistency. Number two, don't complicate it. And I think the mo number three, the most important thing is just spend good time with people. Have great people around you, right? If you're around people that are only benefiting you and pushing you forward and saying and giving you constructive criticism, that's what will level you up necessarily, right? If you're around people, like when I was in my hometown and people are not just denying it, but they don't believe it. Is that realistic? Like, why yeah. would you do that? Why would you move out to the West Coast? Like that, that's not gonna work. Like just be realistic. I think you're, you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. And that's a very generic thing that I believe a lot of people may have heard, but if you haven't, it's true. And every successful person I've sat down with, they've really told me like, isolate yourself into a group of people or a network of friends or family that can, truthfully give you positive vibes. If you're around people that are making you feel negative about yourself or you're questioning yourself, you truly need to find a new group of people. And I think that is most important because if you have these negative influences on a daily basis, it's gonna make you second guess things. It's gonna make you yeah. some depressed in some way. And mental mental health is very important in anything. And I think if you, if you do those three things, you'll be way farther ahead in the next three, six, 12 months than you are today. All right, guys, there you have it. 19-year-old Casey Adams, how is it that they can connect with you? Yeah, so uh, you can connect with me on Instagram, just Casey Adams one as well as my podcast, Rise of the Young. And then the new platform, like I said, TikTok, it's blowing up. <laughs> connect yeah. with me on there, just at Casey Adams. And um, yeah, I just post a bunch of random stuff on there, but definitely Instagram is the key. I like it. So I'm going to put his information down below if you guys want to go ahead and check him out. Again, don't be afraid to send him a direct message and see if he can guide you guys in the right direction. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts. I Appreciate you guys' time and like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it to